your laptop powers off and you let it wait a while and then you're able to turn it back on, it could be that your fan has gone bad. Now, if you're a little bit technical, you can go in and fix the fan. That's actually the fan part's cheap. It's just going in there and replacing the fan. It's actually not as difficult as you think it is. There's, you, there's tutorials on YouTube on how you can do that. But what you can do temporarily or maybe even permanently is buy you a thing called a laptop chiller. And it's a fan that you place your laptop on and the chiller connects to the USB onto your laptop. And then what happens is these fans will come up and blow inside into the laptop and keep it cool while you're using it. And that might be more of an inexpensive way to do it. I'd highly recommend that you don't go the cheap route because I've seen them as low as five bucks where they come from China. I would spend a good 20, 30 bucks on one that will be good quality and then I'll go up into your laptop. That may, per that may permanently fix your problem, but it might be something that you will be happy with. What you want to do is get like a hair dryer. Keep the battery out, unplug, and what you want to do, you want to heat it up, and you want to blow the dust out. If you have like an air compressor, you can get an Ace Hardware or Lowe's, a little thing on there that you just take, it's like a duster that you just spray. You just basically go in there and do it very liberally, just a lot in there. But if you don't have access to a, um, if you don't have access to an aerosol air blower, just do it with this. And hold it up against the fan like this. Do it on a cool setting and do that for a good minute right in there. If you see other vents on the sides, go ahead and blow through there. Right? Let it cool down for a good 15 minutes. Plug it back in and see if it works. It could be that it was just too much dust on it. But power cords go bad all the time. So this particular one uses this particular power brick. Right now I have it plugged in. Well, what you want to do is examine it. Both parts. Usually they have the power brick and they have the power cord that goes into the brick. So what I want you to do is to examine both. If it has like a peripheral light, that's even better. So a lot of times what they'll do is they'll have like a little light here on the side that you'll recognize. It'll be blue or green. It'll stay on constantly. Find out if that light is off or on. That will indicate a lot of what's going on with your laptop. This particular Dell, the, the light is actually on the power cord itself. Okay, so as you can see there, it's on there. If this does power on for whatever reason, then it's probably not going to be the power cord. The power cord is probably not going to be broken. If you realize that the power light is off, that's good news. Because it could be the power brick, but it could also be the AC cord that goes into the power brick. And there's usually two kinds for laptops. So this particular one is like a three-prong power cord, as you can see there. And the second one is it's called a non-polarized AC power adapter. And it's a figure eight symmetric, you can see there. This goes with the majority of laptops, Microsoft Surfaces, other different, other different laptops. It's either one or the two, usually. Sometimes there is a, a variation where this is called a uh, polarized, where one side looks like an X. These cords are super cheap to get. Both of them are super cheap. You can get them for less than 10 bucks on Amazon or eBay. And I could put some link in the description to tell you where you can get it. But look around your home. So you can see this TV back behind me. This particular one uses this non-polarized figure eight. You could use them interchangeably with different devices. You're not going to hurt anything. So what you can do is temporarily take the cord out of your TV. This goes with this particular one, Xbox Ones. It goes with PlayStations. It goes with uh, Apple TV. It goes with printers. I have an HP printer down here that this works with. Multiple different devices. I bet you you have one of these at home. It's possible you might have one of these at home if your laptop uses that. This, this works with like LG TVs um, and a few other devices, so look around. You might have an old or broken laptop you haven't used in a while. Check its power cord and see if one of those would work on your laptop. See if it'll fit. If so, it might not be your power brick that's broken. It just might be this part. What you can do is replace this particular cord. And usually I like getting them on eBay, honestly. And what you can do is every power cord has a model number. And so it'll usually say model 
and it'll be some letters and digits. What I want you to do is look at your particular model number on your cord and purchase one on Amazon or eBay. I know it's not preferable that you want to spend money. However, if it's the power brick, you know, it's better than getting and have to buy another laptop. And on Amazon and eBay, they usually take returns. So, you know, it's kind of a win-win situation. Check the battery connection. And what I want you to do is un to take the battery completely out. It's very rarely that you'll have a laptop where the battery is inside. To just take off the bottom base and then just disconnect the battery. And then just wait for about a good five minutes. Make sure you firmly put the battery back on. And then try to power on and see if it works. Next thing I want you to do is check out your outlet that you have this thing plugged into. Okay. So check the outlet. Make sure that you can connect another device on it, like a hair dryer or your smartphone. And make sure that your, your outlet's just not tripped up where you plug into the wall. Take your laptop into another room. Try it out somewhere else. Next thing I want you to do is check out the memory. So it's the slang term is called RAM. So it looks like this. This particular one is called a DDR3, but the majority of the newer laptops today are called DDR4. And this little slit will be a little bit closer to the center. So what I want you to do is take your battery out again, and on your laptop, this particular memory on this Dell is actually underneath here. So I would have to, to unscrew this part and it will be under here. On YouTube, there's tutorials on where to find the RAM. A lot of them are easy. A lot of them are just like little compartments. And usually laptops has two of these. Some only have one, but it will be two side by side. And they basically just click out. You just basically click those two little metal pieces and they pop out. Now, that's could, that particular thing could cause your laptop not to turn on or to power off. Now, what I want you to do, you say, well... How do I know if it's if my RAM's bad? Well, if you have two RAM chips, what you're going to do is troubleshoot. Take them, take one of them out, remove one of them, and just keep one in temporarily, and then plug in your laptop, and then tell me if it works. If it does, then you know it's that one chip that's bad. So the only thing you have to do is get the exact model number, plug that into eBay, and buy another chip. It depends on your laptop and how much RAM you got, but it, it could be anywhere from 10 bucks to 30 bucks for a RAM chip. And uh, let me know, because these usually go out a lot. They're made out of sodium. They've got sodium components on it, and these, these go out a lot. If that one doesn't work, take pop your other one out and then put the, the one that you first took out in, and then check that RAM and see if it powers on. It could be one of the RAMs. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a drain cycle. You're going to take the power off completely. So what you want to do is you're going to hold down the power button for about a good, do it for about a good 30 seconds. Just completely hold it down, not plugged in, the battery completely out. Put your battery back in, and then tell me if you're able to get the laptop working. It is possible that it could be your power jack. Your power jack is loose for whatever reason. That's where the power cord goes into. That means that the power cord actually disconnected from the motherboard, and it would need to be soldered back on. Now that does take a little bit more labor. And you might have to ask around to see if you can get a good rate with that to solder the power outlet back onto the laptop. But hopefully that's not what it is. Now also, too, try using your laptop without the battery. Some people, when their power goes out on their laptop, they focus too much on the battery. Well, keep in mind, laptops are kind of like standing desktops that uses a battery. They're kind of like radio, like those old radio clocks that you would have the battery in it. And if the power goes out, it would still run. Well, the laptops are the same way. But technically, with most laptops, you don't even need a battery. You don't even need to keep the battery in. MacBooks would be an exception. You Usually with MacBooks, you do need to keep the battery in. So try using your laptop without the battery and see if that will keep the power on and see if it will turn on without the battery. And then if you want to replace the battery, you can. Now, finally, if your laptop does come on, but it doesn't go to the operating system, it basically goes to like a BIOS screen with different commands, it won't go into Windows at all. Nine times out of ten, that means your hard drive is bad. And so if your hard drive is bad, you would need to replace the hard drive and then reinstall the operating system back onto the hard drive, whether you got Windows 7 or Windows 10 or, you know, you know, an Apple software. You would have to reinstall the software. If you have an issue where the Windows won't completely boot, you have a bad virus or something, and you want to do a full factory restore, I'll put a link to the video at the end of this video that will show you how to do a full factory restore on almost all the laptops, and I'll put that on the end of this video. 
All right, before you hear my lecture about subscribing to my channel, make sure you put in the comment in the comment section which method worked for you if it did work, and also put the model number or the model laptop that you have or MacBook. So, if, for example, if you have an Acer Aspire, put that in the description and you used a hairdryer and the hairdryer worked, please put that in the comment section so it's very important for other people to see that. You! You! Come here! You! Yes, you! I need your help. Come here! You see this right here? This wall's empty. I need a YouTube play button. In order for me to get a YouTube play button, I need 100,000 subscribers. I got, what, 20, 30,000 right now? I need 100. I need you. Please, you, to subscribe. You think, my subscription doesn't help. Yes, it does. I need 100,000. I need. I visualize. I visualize what I want in this world. And what I want is a YouTube play button. I want a YouTube play button, and I need you to subscribe. You can help me. You can make your dreams come true. Just visualize it. Whatever you want in this world, you can have it. You can have all your dreams come true. I want you to help me make my dreams come true. All right? So please, please subscribe.